Hey guys. Right, hopefully I've got everything working. Ah, uh, yeah. Oops, I can hear myself turn that down. Who've we got? Yeah, I sat crack, hammock, steps, uni 64, Colt 45, for I. Welcome guys. Um, so it's going to be a grab bag tonight. So instead of looking at one game in particular, we're going to look at some demos. Um, I've got three demos to look at. Um, and then if anybody's got any suggestions as we go along, we'll have a look at some games as well. Um, I don't actually know why I've got the Sublime open, I don't really need it, but I'll, I'll leave it open anyway in case we want to have a look at some stuff. Um, so I thought we'd start by taking a look at uh, a demo. I think it's... I always get mixed up. It's Sakrak, I think. That crack is Carl, right? In the in the Discord, you guys with your different names on Discord and Twitch <laughs> confuse me. My poor addling brain. So we're going to have a look at um, Carl's demo first, Sackrack's demo. Um, so let's start. Let's just take, let's just take a look at it first. Let's. Uh, and apparently there's a hidden part in this, I don't know where it is, or how to get to it, so maybe... <laughs> I might not see I didn't know who I was. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so we'll take a look at it first, let me just make sure I've got the sound on. Yeah, I have, alright. Uh, actually, just pause it a second, because... I'll also need to turn the sound on in here so you can actually hear it. And that was the music down. Let me know if that's... Ah, okay. Hold left, down and fire on joystick in port 2 when running. Okay, we'll do that in a second. Evening on ladies. Hi Andy. I think it'll be a relatively short stream tonight. I'm probably not going to go past 12 o'clock. I'm feeling quite tired today. Need to save all my energy for the weekend. It's really cool this. I like it. A nice use of, of splits and Cool scroller as well. Ah, yes. Let me. Ah, yes. I don't know if that's going to work. I really like this bit as well. I'm intrigued how you've done this. I've got some ideas, but I, I want to take a look at it, obviously. Seems better. Okay, cool. Because I've got my desktop audio turned on, so... Just going to double check that I don't have my... Um, my mic audio coming through. That should be better. That should be alright now, I think. Was it me that was echoing? I like that as well, that fading, that's nice. Oh, I know what it is.
yeah, I have my Twitch on in the background, that's why. Okay, so let, let's try and load up the... What was it again? Left... Left down and fire on joystick port 2, okay. Left down and fire. was at the end of it and that was the end of it let me run it again make sure my joystick settings are on joystick settings he set a is joystick 2 and that's okay I should be able to do that right again That's not working. Oh, missed it. When have I got to do it then? Hold it down right at the beginning. Do it again. Aha! Oh, that's a nice DYCP as well. Wow, that's in good range on that. That's cool. That's hard to read. <laughs> cool. I like the I like the colours as well. I mean, guessing you've just set the colour ram. There, no need to scroll it because the the text scrolls through it anyway. So. Wow, six K of text. Cool. A nice effect though, so, and it's a nice a nice DYCP. Looks like you've got some horizontal spacing as well, which is nice. I don't know if that's just natural because of the, the height. I think it might be actually. Yeah, this is, isn't it? Yeah. Six color ram. Yeah. That's cool. All right. Well, let's let's open it up in the um, in the debugger and take a peek at it. Let's open that up. Close vice down in the background. Other than already, it's crashed on me. Oh, we had a mouse control to it. Well, let's see if we can start by activating the um, the secret bit first. No, missed it. I don't think my joystick control works very well in debugger. Let's try with the... I thought I changed the, the keys, but apparently not. Let's try again. Yeah, it's probably going to be a pain to do in the debugger. Okay, so... So this is a nice effect as well, this dithering effect. Um, I've never actually, I'm guessing this is bitmap, I've never actually done anything like this. Oh no, it's, oh no, it is bitmap, okay. With sprites, ah, okay, that explains the effect then. Ah, clever, okay. I'm guessing you have a couple of different sprites for each section. Um, ECM and sprites. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, you've got standard background color mode on the bottom there. So you get the high res kind of dithering, which is nice. Hi, Hayes. Welcome to the stream. We're, we're taking a look at um, some demo effects tonight. So this is a demo that Sacrack did for, um, is it Zoo Party, I think? Um, we're just gonna have a look at that, but that that's nice. I like that effect. So, 
So he's using um, extended color background mode there, which allows you to change the background color individually for each square. Um, it limits how many characters you can have to 64. Um, but for this, it's absolutely perfect. So I, I guess the sprite is actually the black area. Um, so there's this, uh, this, this cover here, which I'm guessing is animating through some characters. If we have a look at the character set. Um, do I get the character set up? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you can see there's some dither patterns at the top here, which are being animated through this block. So in, in this block here, the dither pattern's been animated through it, um, along with the color, I imagine. I can see what happens when, yeah, so there's a color shift as well using the ECM mode. And ECM allows you to have high res graphics, um, but still have two unique colors in each block. So instead of just the background and then one for uh, a, a common background color and um, a solid, um, sorry, a common background color and then unique foreground colors, ECM mode lets you have a unique background color and a unique foreground for um, for each each area. So it achieves this nice high res dither. Um, and then it looks like he's using um, high res sprites to create a, a black um, overlay to, to cut out the um, the negative space basically to create the, the, the characters and then a, a multiplexer to plex four lines of sprites in. It's a nice effect, I like it. That was so you can see there how it works. I'm just going to restart because that's really interesting to watch actually in this mode. If you watch down here, you'll see if I just move the, um, the arrow down here, you can see how it's been animated through and then the sprites overlaid to cut out the negative space. Nice effect. I like that one. So this one, I had some ideas how this was done, um, and it's not actually what I thought it was, interestingly. Oh no, it is. Okay, so so the, the letters on the trains are sprites. I assumed these were sprites as well as they were, so these tiles as they're revealed. Um, they're characters once they've been revealed, but until they're revealed, they're sprites that animate in. Um, then there's some color splits to create the different different bands of color gray black and the blue and then the trains that go past um, Character animations, but with some sprites on stuck onto the, the trains create the text And then some nice nice sprite animations in here as well did you do the, the art for this as well, Sack, right? Really nice. Really need to up my art game. Okay, so this. Okay, I'm trying to make head or tail of what's going on here. So let's have a look at it in the top here. Okay, so, oh, missed that. Let's go back. So that looked like a combination of um, different speed character scroll animations with some sprites overlaid on it as well to create a bit more depth to it. Um, ease reset properly. Come on, why are you not resetting? There we go. That's also a nice effect, that reveal here as well. That's my favorite effect so far is this ECM, ECM gradient. Interesting, you have another sprite underneath. What is this second sprite for? Yeah. 
Ah, 24 pixels, I see. Oh yeah, of course, because you're using... Yep, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because you're using three rows of characters for the tiles, and unfortunately sprites are only 21 high. Which, yeah, it's, it's, it was a strange choice, I think. <clears throat> okay, yeah, so this is what I thought. This is a couple of rows of character animations with each each row moving at a slightly different speed and then sprites overlaid to create the, the extra depth there as well. Which looks like this on here, it looks really nice as well. So again, this looks like another dithering uh, thing using a char set. I don't see any sprites in here. Uh, this sprite data is all so it's like code or some other char data. Yeah, 21 lines to get it under 64 bytes. I'd have preferred it though if they'd have gone with um, 16 by 16 um, and then done it in 32. So it's just full screen char animation. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. It looks like you've got uh, kind of dithering char sets in here. Um, there we go. Yeah, so. And I'm guessing this char set isn't changing, it's just the map into the screen that's changing, or, or is it that that's changing? Yeah, okay, the char set's staying the same, you're just changing map. And I'm guessing what you're doing there is you're only changing, you're only drawing the things that have changed and not um, everything else. Um, although, it is, you can draw a full screen in that time. Uh, Hi, and Rebels, welcome to the stream. Oh, thank you for the follow, by the way, guys. I'm, I've turned all my sound off, so now I can't actually, I can't actually hear the the other. So I have to keep an eye on that. Uh, thank you, Mickey's seventy five, and thank you, Oz and Rebels, for this uh, for the follow and welcome to the stream, guys. Okay, let's go back. So um, maybe Sakrat can confirm here. Um, I I don't know if you're doing a full screen refresh every every update or if you're just changing what's what's actually changed okay this this is the one i wanted to see ah uh, welcome back to the stream vittorio nice to see you again just changing screen pointers ah okay so you're doing um multiple frames so you're updating the screen ahead of time so it's kind of like a double buffer but um i guess you're using more than more than one in the chart set okay some really nice effects in this i like it so before we switch over to the screen i was trying to think about what, what is going on here so but when i first saw it um like in this state before the, the characters started melding together i thought this is just sprites it's just a very tight sprite multiplexer um with maybe two rows of balls drawn to sprites each frame but when it starts doing the twists and stuff, there's far too much overlap for that. So I was thinking maybe this was um, software sprites. In fact, I know I know it is now because Sakura's kind of confirmed that. So um, let's go and have a look. I know it is sprites as well. Okay, interesting. So there are some sprites. All right, I want to see this running. So it's a combination of sprites and software sprites. Okay, cool. Uh, let's have a look at the char set. Uh, there's a char set. Oh my God, I still can't get these buttons right. Here we go. Oh no, hang on. Is this? Oh, it's because I'm in the top here. If I, yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, I see. So by using both software sprites and sprites, you you can kind of increase the performance a little bit over just using software sprites, um, and give yourself technically more sprites. Um, hence why you can probably see this split here because we've paused it as the raster's updating it. Um, actually, it wouldn't matter if that was sprites or. Yeah. 
Tommy Giza 75 welcome to the stream. Oh, you're the guy that did the Rygar. It looks very cool. And yes, you should come over to the C64. I saw the F keys till something happens. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> it's kind of my approach to using the debugger at the moment. I did have a, a printout. Um, somebody posted a list of all the keys, and I did print them out. Um, I do have them in the manual as well. Can't you do it only with software sprites? I would suspect that would be quite a lot of work to do with just software sprites. It makes sense to use eight of the sprites if you can, just to give yourself, um, to just to give yourself a little bit of leeway with it. Because each character here is, I mean, what this is three, six, eight, uh, twelve here. So as long as you you either draw the first eight or the last eight with with sprites. Um, I'm, I'm guessing what you're doing, Sackrack, is probably the first you draw. Um, well, it looks like you're drawing from right to left, so you're probably setting the the first eight sprites um, based on real hardware sprites, and then switching over to software sprites for the rest. Because the number would be variable, so I would imagine I would imagine it makes sense to do the hardware sprites first, and then and then switch over. It's a nice effect. I, I want to see the memory map as well because there must be some nice kind of tables. Yeah, so this is, I'm guessing this is the kind of animation, uh, the pattern tables that control all the, the, um, the kind of the paths that the balls go along. That's so what, what this, oh, okay, yeah, and you've got the code for it at the beginning here. Uh, Okay, let's go and have a look at that. Let's. Oh, this is unrolled code. Look, there we go. So this isn't the tables. It's it's just unrolled speed code. Um. Lots of store accumulators. Interesting. Uh, no, Magiza, this is um, ah, the clear code. Uh, yes, that would make sense, hence why the store accumulator is everywhere. Uh, this is a C64 debugger. So on, on a Thursday on stream, um, I take, uh, usually I take a, a, a game suggestion from someone and we look at how that game has been implemented and we use the debugger to investigate kind of memory maps and, and you know, sprite layouts and, and uh, how the rasters work and on different screens and we can look at the code and we can look at the uh, the memory map and see see what's going on as well as kind of being able to zoom in on any piece of the memory and see what values are being set and whether they're being read to or written um, but tonight we're doing a kind of effects grab bag where we're just grabbing some uh, demos and taking a look at them and seeing how they work okay so yeah this makes sense that this would be clear code so this is sorry speed code for for clearing what I imagine is the is the screen for the this, this area here, uh, which we can check if we have a look at the screen. So, 5C100. Um, I'm guessing there are two buffers in here. Run that. Oh no, it's not. It's oh, it's the char set. You're clearing the char set. Okay. So it's the char set that updates here rather than the. Uh, let's put this over here. Yeah, okay. So it's a char set clearing function here. Oops. Cool. Let's pause again. Pausing it because I don't wanna I don't wanna go back to one screen four char sets. Okay, yeah. That's cool. So are you running this on alternate frames or I'm guessing this is let me see, how would you, if you're using four char sets. Yeah, I'm guessing you're, you're staggering it between the four, aren't you? So, drawing as fast as you can. Yeah, okay. It's cool. I like it. Um, I'm always jealous when I see um, speed code because as a game developer, 
um, as as we know when we've been doing the stream, you, you're kind of limited to how often you can use speed code, um, but you can get some really nice benefits from it. So on actually on Saturday, I've been thinking about the scroller for the game on Saturday, and that's going to be unrolled speed code, I think, um, just because there there isn't a limit a, a memory limit on this game, um, and I think we'd be incredibly lucky to fill sixty four kilobytes with with content. Um, over the course of 12 hours so i thought it makes sense to just unroll the, the the scrolling code completely um into memory so if one frame is slower uh the next couple of frames might cancel out uh, because generated in code to save memory okay so alex sweden i do use speed code to code speed code Sixteen K games do introduce um the ability to kind of do that sort of thing as well. So um I mean I did it a little bit in Doc, but um the the Neutron that Sarah Jane Avery did is absolutely full of that sort of stuff. So you'll see that the scroller used in Neutron is fully unrolled uh, scrolling code. Um but it was it generated at runtime from the sixteen byte uh, sixteen bit uh, from the sixteen kilobyte um PRG file. So, so when it runs, the first thing it does is it generates that scrolling code, which allows it to fill up way more than you know the sixteen kilobytes. Uh, what time am I starting this coding stream on site? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start at five p.m. Um, yeah, it will be about five p.m. It may be a couple of minutes, you know, maybe like quarter past or so, but round about round about five p.m. We'll be starting that. Um, I'm really looking forward to it actually. I've got uh, Monsters Go Boom did some amazing um, sprites. Um, uh, when was it? Was it today? No, it was yesterday um, on Discord. So I'm going to have a go at animating some of those and, and maybe creating some, some in the same style tomorrow. So we've got assets ready for it. Um, I believe Steps is uh, working quite well towards getting some music and sound effects ready for the game. Um, and I've done some basic background assets, which will be enough to kind of get us going on it. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. All right, let's continue on a little bit. Well, actually, no, let's have a look at this this code. So, um, okay, so actually, without the context of what's in these C5s, I, I don't really know what's going on here, but I'm guessing this is... Oh, this is speed code as well. So, so it looks like this is these values here are the mask and the um, and and the ball data, but unrolled. So it's doing it um, without having to kind of do a loop. The only loop looping that's happening is through the uh, through this the char set data. So this will be a char set lookup. Um, the and here will be the mask. Yes, yeah, current current oh current screen byte. Okay, um, and C seven looks like it might be so. So either C five or C seven is is that okay? But yeah, it's it's unrolled again to make it fast, which is nice. Um, and then C nine as well. Okay, so it's just a really, really optimized unrolled loop using indirect indexed addressing. So. <laughs> C7 is the next chart. Okay, yeah. I, I, looking at the game code from, uh, from the weekend, I, I kind of want to optimize the soft sprite again a little bit more. Um, I'm not happy with its performance. Um, it's kind of, it's probably just about all right, but I, I feel like there's, we could probably shave 30, 40 percent of the cycle time off that. Um, it's not really. I mean, every time I've gone to do it, I've been drunk, so it's been difficult to to really kind of look into it and find a better way of doing it. So I may do a bit of optimization on that at some point in one of the upcoming streams. All right, let's continue this on a little bit. It's a really nice effect. That so, I, where are the look? Is this your lookup tables for the? Hang on, no, that's writing. So that's the character set. 
this is the clearing this down here yeah this is how you learn to make make even cooler stuff and Magiza, I completely agree. I, what I've discovered doing these streams on Saturdays is that I'm, I definitely improve my code when I'm drunk. What I don't improve is my maths. My math skills plummet, um, but my, um, uh, but my but my coding skills improve. I don't know why that is. Yeah, I was just trying to see if I could see those tables. Sometimes, especially when you're using kind of sine sine waves like that you can sometimes see them in memory but it, it depends on the, the width of the table as well i suspect it's this down here um you look at this th these values seem to kind of wave up and down um and they do seem to be being read as it as it's moving you see i, sus I suspect it's these values down here that are the tables Optimization jump to tequila here. Yeah. <laughs> Come here, some more potatoes with a bit offside. Okay. Maybe one day. Oh, that's a nice affair. I like that. Uh, maybe one day I'll I'll do a demo. But I, I the thing is, I wouldn't want to do a demo um, without having a decent artist to work with, a decent musician to work with. So. Are you sure I just aren't proud of what I did? Well, this weekend, uh, last weekend even, I we did um, the scoring routine, if you remember, and wrote the original routine. And then I went for a little break. And during the break, I came back and I had a much better way of doing it that, that reduced the code down to like a third of the size and was way more efficient and way more practical. And the only difference between before um, I did that routine, and after it was I drunk more alcohol, so I don't know. <laughs> and it it seems like the impediment of being drunk doesn't seem to Im impair my ability to um to look at code. I can still find things. So yeah, it's it's strange. I mean, it's a pretty pretty pointless superpower to have isn't it really if if you can call it that um yeah so these are definitely the tables you can see how they're being read there and this is the clear routine happening so there's one clear routine for each buffer it looks like here um there's some unpacking going on so you'll you'll notice something unpacks into into memory here I'm guessing once each message has kind of finished it it goes on uh, it unpacks the next one or the next kind of un unrolled code into memory so I was assuming this was probably sprites but when I was looking at it I was thinking actually this is this is a little bit more but I guess if you if you don't think of each sprite as a letter, if you think of it as just a block of of pixels, then you don't necessarily have to have one one letter to each each uh, sprite. Um, so I, th I think this is sprites, but let's let's take a look. Yeah, thought so. I mean, it has to be really because it, it's scrolling over this this bitmap. So yeah, so it's a it's a block of eight eight sprites moving up the screen. Um, using multiplexers to to split it into each row um, a nice effect going on down here um, I'm guessing you've got some kind of table of character data which allows you to to draw these characters anyway um, and possibly some dither data that you can overlay over the top of it as well um, so let's have a look at memory again, see if we can find where that might be. Uh, this looks like this looks like the bitmap actually, potentially. Hi Martin sixty four, welcome to the stream. That's from a source or location directly into the sprite data. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. So you've got you've got two sources. You've got. Um, 
you you've got your your text source and then you've got some mask data and while you're masking you can instead of putting the text data directly into the sprite you 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 do them do the mask on it first although the mask looks consistent across it so i'm guessing i'm guessing you don't have to do you don't have to look up a mask it's probably just a value that you can mask each each byte for although you're alternating rows by the looks of things uh, each fourth row is really fast yeah yeah so i was thinking because you're, you're missing out some rows so so when you're actually drawing this you just skip in some rows okay cool again though nice effect i like it and same at the top as well Yeah, it's really cool. I like it. Um, I'm impressed. Like I say, I'd, I'd love to do a demo at some point. I, I guess I should... I guess I should try it one day. Um, just because I like, I like trying to do things that I don't really get to... Um... Oop, do I have a raw sprite view? Oops, let's pause. I like to do things um, that I don't get a chance to do in, in demos. You mean you mean this mode? You can see all the sprites at once, or do you mean um, where is it? You mean this mode where you can see the actual sprites? So this one lets you see the sprites, or all, all, all the sprites in RAM. No, you would have to you would have to use this as well. So where are your sprites? Let's have a look. Um, they're at five thousand. So fourth, the bank starts at four thousand. So if you go into memory here, um, you can kind of see them down the side here as you go through. Uh, it's not not the best for, for looking at sprites. You're better off with a disassembler for that sort of stuff. I think there might be a way to do it in here maybe. No. No, there isn't really a good way to do it. Have I found the secret part? I, I, I wouldn't say I found it. I would say that I was shown it. <laughs> Um, let's let's load up the uh, disassembler. Although the disassembler is not really going to work from this point. Let me load it up into the, the into Vice. So I'll show you now how you can use the uh, disassembler to investigate investigate these things using Vice snapshots. Um, I, I highly recommend using this uh, this infiltrator disassembler as well. I I had never really used a proper C64 disassembler before, and I can't remember who it was, but somebody mentioned it. Um, so I took a look at it and absolutely love it now. The shout out let laxity in the demo. Ah, now I found out today, um, as you will see in one of the demos that we'll we'll look at. Um, there's a scene of called laxity and i don't think he's related to the laxity group i think his name is just his scene name is laxity and it looks like he's been around way way longer than the laxity group so that was a little bit confusing i was unsure whether or not i should even be looking at his dem uh, this demo and then i realized that there was no mention of the laxity cracking group in there Yeah, I think it's the musician, yeah. He's done a lot. He's been around a long time. I mean, looking at the his history on CSDB, he's been around for a long, long time. Really nice stuff in this demo though, I like it. I think Kefren's had a member called Lacity. Okay. So we'll just wait for this to go through and then what we'll do is we'll take a snapshot in Vice and we can open it up in the in the debugger. So one of the cool things about demos, and another reason I'd like to give it a try at some point, is um, you don't have to have everything loaded into memory at once. Although this is a single file, um, I'm assuming most of this is unpacked as it as it goes. So 
um, and especially on the bigger demos, the multi multi disc demos, um, it's all kind of stream loaded as it goes along. So you can use the entire 64k for one effect, um, and then unpack the next one, and, and so on and so on. It's an impressive size, actually. It's 35 kilobytes cr uh, crunch. This this thing, so that's pretty good, man. Did you do multiple crunches on on it, or is it just a single um, a single packer that you're using? Okay, here we go. So let's save a snapshot. Um, clip rebels. I feel like I'm about to say yes for X party. I, as I say, I think I would like to, um, I would like to do demos, but I, I, a demo, maybe not demos, but I would like to do some something like that. Um, but I'd want to do it with a proper artist. I wouldn't want to do it on my own. It would just be weird to try and um, to do that and and, as, and music as well, and maybe even work with other coders on it because I don't. While I, I've got the kind of knowledge for doing games, I don't really have the knowledge for for doing everything in demos. So I'd like I'd like someone to hold my hand if I was to do that. Okay, let's open a, this snapshot. Let's go in here. Also, I've got so many things that I'm doing at the moment. It's kind of kind of difficult to fit it all in. Okay, so once you've got that unpacked in Infiltrator. Um, you've got this SPR which allows you to open the sprites and we're at 4000 uh, I'm not seeing anything oh, that might be the screen data actually let's there we go why am I only seeing okay Oh, I guess these are built on the fly then. So somewhere in memory there is, it looks like here actually, is the letters that form. Looks like it is anyway. It looks like 8,000 onwards is the is the alphabet that makes it up. Um, okay, let's, whoops, I'll open the hex editor. Let's skip it on a little bit. Oh, I've got to the reset point, haven't I? Okay, load snapshot. Okay, let's get a good old screen full of text on here. That'll do. Uh, snapshot, save snapshot image. So it looks like the sprite banks are updated on the fly. Um, well, that, of course they must be. It must be, otherwise you wouldn't be able to store all these in anyway. So. It looks like this 8000 is the um, the location of the font, judging by the, the kind of patterns that I'm seeing there. I mean, I'm just guessing, but it looks like it is um, the font data, uh, which makes sense because it's outside of the Vic Bank. Um, you wouldn't want to use the space in the Vic Bank to, to use data that didn't have to be in there. Um, and then the sprites are in here. Rose. Interestingly, there's a gap from 4 800 um, right up to 5000 here. Or maybe that's just a gap in the names. <laughs> clear rows. Okay, they were just clear rows. I want to see that that data. I mean, how wide are those letters? Let's have a look. They they look like they're sixteen wide, maybe no, maybe a bit less. In fact, it looks like they vary. It doesn't look like it's a mono spaced font. I might be wrong. Oh, they are sixteen by sixteen, so I am wrong. Fair enough. Um, I don't think there's an easy way of seeing that in here. Yeah, there isn't an easy way of seeing that, unfortunately. This is just going to show me character sets. Uh, yeah, this is not going to help at all. So there are other tools out there as well that will let you load in um, fonts. In fact, I think uh, Char 
char pad will probably um, let you see those those characters. But yeah, look, that's this is the dithering that's happening, like the masking. So as it's being copied into these sprite banks, this mask is being applied just on this row. Um, and then I'm guessing when this row moves up to this row, the next row will have that dithering applied. And it, it, it conversely, when they reach the top, the the same will happen with the the top characters as well. Yeah, that font 1991. <laughs> wow, cool. It's a nice font. I like it. I have always struggled to do the uh, the bigger fonts. Um, to be honest, my font design isn't isn't that great anyway. Um, it's functional. It does the job. Um, I'm not one for fancy fonts. I, I don't like fonts that are too fancy because they become hard to read. So small fonts that are fancy, I struggle to do because they're they're really difficult to read. Bigger fonts, I think you can get away with a bit more detail because they're they're a bit easier to um, they're a bit easier to kind of put detail into. Yeah, it's a nice font. Cool. Yeah, really cool. That's that cracker. I like it. I want to see more. Have you got any more demos in the pipeline? Catch up with the chat. Steps here for music, talent people for graphics. Yeah, maybe we should do that. Maybe when we've maybe when we've done the um, uh, the game, the Saturday game, we we can do a demo. Um, maybe collaborate on something something together as a group and uh, and, and release release a demo. Is this the references? Oh, is this the Amiga demos? Let's have a look at this. Oops. Um, the Rebels, 1989. Ah, okay. So this was an Amiga demo originally. So let's have a look at the Amiga demo then. Um, I watch this on slightly bigger screen. There we go. No, no. There we go. Wow, you have been really faithful to it as well. I like it. Yeah, Bob, Bob said, yeah, amazing. The, uh, I can't remember who this demo is that we're going to look at next is, uh, but it's, it's a very, very impressive, uh, impressive demo. Um, I, I fully don't expect to be able to figure out 90% of what's in there, um, but it's going to be interesting to look at anyway. It's called, uh, the next demo we're going to look at is called Un Unboxed. It's from uh, last year, um, and it's it's a very impressive demo. Some really really cool effects in there. You've actually got more going on in the background in your. Oh, there is a dancing guy there actually. Oh, there's no, there's no other. Oh, okay. So you've got more screens going on as well. Oh, and another one as well. So Rebels was an old Amiga demo uh, group then. Amiga gets spoilt with all the bobs, doesn't it? Look at that. We can only dream of that kind of... And this is the same but from TV. And 
Christmas at the TV so a unique demo competition. Oh, so it ended up on a TV show. <laughs> oh, I saw an ocean logo there as well. Oh, and you, the, oh, okay, I see. So it really is just kind of an homage to the old, the old groups, the Mega demos. Stop some of this sound. And the blue house as well. I only even had the secret behind it. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I, I agree, Amok. I think I think the 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 level of creativity on the um on the C sixty four is is astounding. And the fact that the the groups constantly try and find ways to push and push and push the hardware. Uh, I mean we constantly see things that, that, that blow me away all, all the time. I think the demo scene is amazing, honestly. I think it's the best demo scene. I think the only other demo scene that comes close are that the um, the the PC 4K challenges that they do, um, where people write these these incredible demos with like procedural music and procedural graphics in in four kilobytes, and they look better than you know graphically than a lot of the games out there. Okay, um, I'm going to take a quick two minute break now. Uh, when I come back, we'll uh, we'll take a look at um, we'll take a look at Unboxed. Um, I'm just going to find out who Unboxed is by. I can't remember. I think it might be Crest. Um, uh, oh, Bonsai. Bonsai. It has got um, m music by yeah, laxity of maniacs and noise. Bonsai, uh, Drax of uh, Crest, uh, but the code is is the, the demo is a Bonsai demo, okay. But it's it's very very impressive. So uh, we'll take a look at that one next. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to be back in two minutes. So I'll stick my be right back on and uh, right back. Yeah, quick one again because it's freezing outside. Right. Okay, let's take a look at this demo first. Um I'll play it all the way through first so you can see it and then we'll go through as much as I can figure out. There's an awful lot in it that I won't be able to, I can tell you that now. It's a very impressive demo. Hopefully the music is on. I'm gonna turn my alert sounds back on because alert box. It's way too hot in Los Angeles, lucky sod. Wish I was in Los Angeles right now. And there's proof it's a modern, <laughs> a modern demo. I think pretty much every every um, dev on Earth is had some kind of nightmares with GDPR at some point. So again, this is this is uh, clever because it's only doing like one in f about a quarter of the pixels are being updated there. Looks like FLD with some sprites. glitch effect on the on the sprite. I really like how the, the music matches um, and the sounds match this. It's really cool. It's these scrollers that are the most impressive thing about this. There's a couple that I think I, I, I'm not entirely sure how they do it at all. I also like these these rasp effects that they do that, that introduce the different background colours rather than just switch to a background colour. 
So this is a nice effect. I'm still not sure how this is done. Um, I'm guessing it... No, it's not sprites, is it? I'm, I'm not sure how this is done. I'll have to have a look. This is the thing. I need to learn all these effects and play around with them. This is a nice effect as well. You'll see as the text goes over. So I've got an idea how this is done, um, but I want to look in a bit of detail at what's going on. So I think what's happening is they're just changing color RAM, and these borders here are done with uh, sprites, stretched sprites, and they're covering the the kind of the flick between the different um, the flick between the different uh, color RAM squares. So it's hiding that kind of flicker as it moves across. A very nice D DYCP effect which is actually working on columns of individual pixels um, very impressive and works in the side border as well so they're using sprites in the side border here yeah open side border is not an easy thing to do at all And yeah, not not useful in games at all. <laughs> Another nice effect. Um, yeah, this this sort of thing I love the the kind of bouncing, the bouncing colours and borders. And this is nice. I think this is probably some kind of FLD effect that's moving this down. I guess it could be sprites, um, but I think it would probably be easier to do with a. Um, with a bitmap and use FLD to to move it down down the screen and uh, maybe scroll it across uh, using VSP as well. But, but if it was ADSP, I would expect there to be some crunching up here, but there's not. So yeah, it probably is speed code. It's a good point because otherwise you would see gaps up here. There would be there would be more background color here. This is like the level of my demo code in this. I could do this bit. I couldn't draw the sprite, but I could I could do the code. <laughs> yeah, side side borders is um is completely useless to doing games because you kind of have to do everything on every single raster line. Nice effect here as well. I, I'm guessing this is just character scrolling um, with some border sprites here as well. Um, notice that the uh, the bottom border is being used there as well. There's probably some kind of thing going on here. I have no idea how this is done. This is a, they call it a zoom scroller, I think. I have no idea how this is done at all. I'm guessing again, this is just speed code. Considering it was only dealing with half of the screen. Yeah, Boonie, exactly. It's um so you, you open the top and bottom border by changing the um the the from thirty eight uh, sorry from twenty four to twenty five uh, row mode um at just the right time to trick the Vic into thinking that it's already drawn the borders uh, when it hasn't. Um and it's the same with the, the side borders as well, but obviously with the side borders you have to do it on every single line, so... It takes some very stable timing, um, and you have to deal with bad lines as well, which is is never easy. Okay, let's stick this two in. This is a nice effect as well.
Yeah, you, uh, doesn't skipping the bad lines though create the FLD effect as well? So you kind of move stuff down the screen. So you need to you need to counter that as well at the same time. Because if you skip a bad line, it means you're not you're not retrieving character data for the um, for for that location on the screen. But if you were doing something, yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I don't know enough about how demos work to do this sort of thing. More use for the bottom border here, so this is all be sprites as well. Just a really nice image as well, kind of, kind of simple, nice, simple blocks of color, not too much dithering. Again, side borders open here, so lots of sprites being used. Draw this stuff. This is nice as well. So this is uh, obviously it's using sprites here uh, and, and definitely down here in the border. I'm certain it's not using sprites over the whole screen because that would be difficult, I think, to get those splits working. They don't, unless they're using that, um, there's a technique called uh, massively interleaved sprite crunching. They could be using that. I know there's a couple of demos that have used that already. It allows you to shrink the size of a sprite down. Um, that's the only way you could get sprites that small um, and still be able to multiplex them as well. So they could be using that. It's called massively interleaved sprite crunching. Um, and it's an incredibly complex effect. I've, I've looked up how to do it. It's uh, It's difficult. And another, another um, a zoom scroller. Nice twist, twist scroller as well. And they combine this effect in a minute with um, with uh, like solid raster bars as well, big chunks of raster color to make it look like it's rotating around on a yeah this thing here. It makes it look like it's rotating around on a on a block, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it was eight columns of text, wasn't it? Maybe it is sprites all over the screen. I think it might be using that sprite sprite um, interleaving. Um, actually, I'll see if I can find a link to that. If anybody's interested in, in that effect, it's called massively interleaved interleaved sprite crunching. Yeah, there we go. Put that, I'll drop that into chat. It's a interesting article explaining how it how it works, but it's <laughs> it looks really really difficult to use. But it does allow you to write some very kind of compact sprite multiplexes. Pretty much only useful in demos. I can't imagine it would be useful in games at all. But it's an interesting read, nonetheless. Uh, thanks, Oz and Rebels. Um, good night. I hope to see you again as well. Yeah, it's the vertical spacing I, I want to figure out. I, I, if the if the vertical spacing between the sprites is is less than 21 then they have to be using that um, sprite interleaving. Um, I'm just going to pause this and just show you the, the picture if I can, there we go uh, from that from that site so let's just make it a bit bigger. So in this demo they demonstrate how um, same thing eight, eight columns of text uh, but these sprites are a lot, a lot less than uh, 21 pixels high. I think they're like 16 or something. Uh, should say on here somewhere. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, exactly. So the the thing with thing with sprites is once you've started drawing it, that sprite will continue to draw until it's drawn all 21 lines. And what this um, method lets you do is reduce the number of lines that it draws. Um, but it does mean they have to lay the sprites out differently in memory. So 
Um, I don't know if they show a picture of it. Yeah, there you go. So this this same sprite looks like this using the interleaved method. Um, so it looks very different. Um, you can just draw the text into the sprite. So I move them up. Yeah, I guess you could. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll we'll take a look in a minute anyway and see see how it's done. I say this is what I need to do. I need to spend some time with um, with with kind of people who write demos and learn learn from them. This is a nice effect, actually. What this does is is kind of cool. Simple but nice. It's a nice visual effect. It looks good. Okay, let's put the next disc in. I think the last bit is just the credit section. I don't think there's much in this. Nice use of sprites in the border to create an interesting effect there as well. Oh no, there is a little bit more. So this is a combination of character scrolling, um, possibly VSP in the middle, I'm not sure it's entirely necessary, you could probably scroll that with speed code quite easily. And then a big sprite, uh, multiplex sprite down the centre, um, and some sprites bouncing across, I'm almost certain that's how that's done. effects I'm guessing this is this is just a child set being written into um, again though no, I don't know so this is a very nice effect as well although this uh, to be honest I say that with all these demos I say it's because most of the time I don't know how these things are done and even if I do know how they're done um, I just think it's yeah it's um, as Amok says, it, everything's in sync with the music, and it's just, you know, they're works of art, they're really good. And these have been made for, you know, the love of the machine, for the love of just kind of creating something artistic and beautiful on the machine, rather than just something to slap on the beginning of uh, somebody else's content, with some crappy, crappy scroller and a little bit of Rasta bar trickery here and there. I think that's it. I think this is the credit section now, actually. Yeah, there we go. Just a really, really nice demo. Really well made, nice and clear, um, artistic. Nice looking. So again, we're, we're probably looking at sprites here. Um, sprites in the border here, extended down through. I like the mass magician showing how their tricks are done. The thing is though, Booney, I don't know how a lot of these tricks are done. I'm, I'm more at home with games, really, uh, than I am with, with these sort of things. Um, Yeah, I, I imagine, because you think there's the sort of people who do these demos have done many of these effects time and time again. They probably have these uh, a lot of this written in Python or C, 
um, uh, and, and can compile it down to you know they've they've probably got pipelines that, that do this for them with with parameters and that allow them to kind of create these effects relatively quickly, um, and then with a bit of hand tweaking, you know, make it match to the music and all that kind of stuff. They're just really nice, really really nice nice effects. All right, let's let's take a look at some of it in. Um, in the debugger, I honestly don't know what to uh, what to expect. So we shall see. Let's see what goes on. The right size. It's roughly about the right size. Update. This is impossible to read for humans. There's a. Um, Oh, hang on, I should have that window open, it's a bit easier. Yeah, it is really nice to have, have an actual demo scene among us to, to help help explain these, because I, I, as I say, I, I'm i kind of guessing with a lot of these things. Um, I have an idea how how some of them work, because I know the limitations of the VIC, I know what it can and can't do, um, and I read a lot about these effects. Um, I just never implement them myself, so... But it's nice to have somebody who's actually actually done these things for real and can give us their insight on it. That's very very much appreciated having you here, Sir Greg. Uh, why is that not loading? It should be loading straight away, and it's not. Have I turned off my auto? Uh, where is it? There is a setting somewhere to oh God what if I have turned this off, haven't I? There's a, a setting somewhere to auto load from that device. And I can't remember where it is. Reset cycle frame. Oh, there we go. Always jump to loaded address. Load first. Yep, there we go. Let's do that as well. Uh, yeah, let's do that. It is all just hacking in the end, but it's it takes it takes years of kind of doing this stuff to learn all these things and to be able to be able to implement them as well. Um, I, I mean, I feel comfortable kind of having an opinion on how some of these things would do, but if I was to implement a lot of them, I, I think I would be, I would be very stuck to be honest. I'm just waiting for a good point to kind of pause this, see what's going on. Okay, so this is a good one to pause on. So as I was saying, I think this is using, it looks like one in every four pixels or so. I mean, it's definitely skipping every other row. Um, and then it's just drawing one kind of block of pixels at a time. So everyone references the side of full Yeah, the, the Vic2, uh, the, the Zimmers.net Vic2 documentation is really good. I'd recommend reading that even for game developers as well, because it's really handy to understand how bad lines work um, and how some of the, the basic effects work, like VSP and FLD can be very useful in games. Um, yeah, let's have a look what's going on here. So... So these are sprites as I would have expected because they're moving around kind of freely over the background. There's no color clash, so you would expect those to be sprites. Um, what I'm interested in is how this is working. I want to see if this character set updates or if it's just the screen. I think it could just be, yeah, as Sakrak said, just draw into the screen these combinations. So it looks like every kind of combination of dithering is available in here. Um, so this this seems like it might be similar to your um, Agnes Eye thing as well. Um, 
I look, I always look over here. I always look at chat when I'm talking, whereas I should be kind of looking there. When I want to talk directly to you, I should talk there. Um, so let's have a look. Yeah, so the char set isn't actually changing. So this is kind of pre calc kind of dither effects, and then they're just being placed on screen. And I'm guessing the color RAM is changing as well. Yeah, so the color RAM is being updated at the same time. Yeah, so this this is similar to Sacrax um, Agnes I. Fairly straightforward. This could be characters or sprites. Doesn't really matter. Probably characters. Not too fussed about these bits. Okay, so I want to see what's going on here. I think this is an FLD effect because I I think um, if we look at the big screen, yes, it looks like it is. So this isn't actually moving, um, and they're using FLD to move it up and down the screen. Um, They did move it a little bit. This is the sprites. That was an FLD effect. So FLD is where you um, you prevent the bad line from happening. So when um, so every eight eight lines, if you don't do anything on every eighth line, the Vic will try and fetch the next row of data. So it will try and f fetch the next row of characters to draw to the screen. Uh, this operation uh, creates what's called a bad line, which means the line the raster line that you run when it gets to that point is basically put on hold you get to about here i think so it's about 23 cycles i think depending on how many sprites you've got over that line um it's about 23 cycles into the line so it's kind of round about here somewhere um and at that point um the cpu can't do anything so you basically lose 40 cycles on that line and that's why we call it a bad line because it's it's a line that's got a less a lot less time to do stuff on um, however you can do some tricks to to stop that from happening so the bad line is based on uh, the current uh, vertical scroll value and the current y value i can't remember if i think it's like if you and them both together um and and the value you and both with seven or so i can't remember the exact formula for it but it's basically a combination of those two things um when they when they reach a certain value which happens once every eight lines um then the um the vic goes off to fetch the characters for the next line so what you can do is you can suppress that bad line by changing so just before it gets to to the point where it, it's going to check and then potentially read the next line you change the y scroll value and what that means is when it gets to that point it can't the, the check fails and it doesn't cause a bad line it carries on going now that has the effect of that when it starts drawing the next row of characters, you're actually still drawing the very last row of pixels from the previous line. So you kind of ruin the data up here. Um, but as long as you set the color up here to, to be the same as the background, you won't see anything. You'll just see blank or if you've got blank characters up here. Um, but what it does have the effect of is when you do start drawing it again, uh, when you do let the Vic uh, register work, you've now actually drawn this row of characters one row row down and so on and you can kind of push the screen all the way down to the bottom by doing that um it's used in a lot of demos um i use it in dot cosmos one actually for the um uh, when the ship comes into land at the very beginning of the game um there's the screen scrolls up but i don't there is no scroll code as such so um i i use that effect to to move the the screen from so it starts all the way so it's pushed all the way off the bottom of the screen and then slowly i bring it up while moving those y scroll well and it creates a nice uh, vertical scroll without me having to scroll the, the color ram or the character ram uh so it requires precise timing i wouldn't say precise it needs to be roughly um accurate you have a buffer zone of maybe 12 cycles or so where you can do it or maybe less maybe eight, eight to 12 cycles or something I couldn't tell you the exact value. Um, 
but you need a relatively stable timer because if you do start kind of jittering around a lot you can get the fld to kind of glitch out a little bit and every now and again you'll you'll see that the fld won't work and the whole screen will suddenly shift up to the top and then down again um so you need relatively precise timings but it doesn't have to be like super precise it's not like vsp where you have to be exactly on a certain area to scroll a certain number of characters across um it's relatively i mean you can do it just by by waiting for uh, the next line and as long as you as long as you know where you are on that on that line you can just count the number of cycles to the point where you need to do the fld um and then do it and it, it should be accurate enough from that you don't need to stabilize the raster or anything okay so that's have a look at this so that's character animations lots of sprites um this bit's characters this bit's sprites Interestingly, that's characters there as well. So that was a character animation there. This is just raster bar effects. So uh, let's go back to that screen again. Oh, get, it, get it right in the end. That one, there we go. Um, so this is just literally just changing the background color on the rasters. And with stable enough timings that you don't see any glitches down the side, although I can see a tiny glitch there actually on the on the third gray bar. Um, basically, you've got quite. If you remember when we've looked at the uh, Vice emulator, you can put it into this uh, border mode. Uh, where is it called? Full borders. Uh, not full borders. Sorry, debug borders. And it creates this large kind of block over here. So as long as you can kind of get the time into to land in here and change the border in here, you won't see the glitch. If we were to run this um, in this mode, you would probably see there'd be a little bit of glitching down the side here. Not a lot, but. Uh, good night, Andy. See you on Saturday. So yeah, Saturday we'll be starting at uh, 5 p.m. So we're, we're going to do 5 p.m. till 5 a.m., um, which is actually a 13 hour stream um, because the clocks go back that night as well. So we gain an extra hour for our self-imposed kind of um, challenge, uh, which is probably going to be a useful hour. And as I will be drinking wine as well at the same time, although I will be taking my time on that. So yeah, this is, this is just doing some border color changes down here and then they're using some um, routines to work out exactly how to move these raster bars around to create this nice kind of gel bar effect. Okay, I was very interested in how they've done this. So this is multicolor text so, and some sprites here. So I'm guessing these sprites are going to be multiplexed over the top some more alcohol needed no i i've already considered this so i did consider uh, my streams normally six hours long on a six six to seven hours long on a saturday um and i get through two bottles of wine but i am quite drunk when i go to bed i am i am really quite drunk and actually i've been i've been struggling on sunday to to deal with it i've been um quite heavily hung over on, on a sunday after it um so I'm not going to double up and do four bottles of wine. I'm just going to stick to two, but I'm just going to spread it out over the night. Um, and towards the end, I'm just going to drink plenty of water so that I'm, I'm okay on the Sunday. I mean, obviously I'll have to sleep in a little bit on the Sunday, but um, <coughs> I, do, I don't want to overdo it. And, and to be honest, having to write the entire thing in 12 hours is probably not going to be that easy if I get completely drunk in the first four or so. Um, especially as if I continue drinking at that point, there's no way I'd be able to do anything. And I suspect there's going to be a lot of maths in this because I do intend on doing as much of it as possible from scratch without reusing any code from anywhere. <coughs> uh, the only exception I can think of, I was thinking about if I'd need to reuse code, and the only exception I can think of is if I do go down the route of using a multiplexer, um, which I'm only going to do if I've got time to do it uh, towards the end. I may reuse my sort routine because I, I got a sort routine from um, Swiv, the game. Um, and I've used it in, in everything I've done because it's really efficient. I think it's come from Codebase or something like that, but um, it's the most efficient sort routine I've used. So I'll probably use that 
at some point if I if I go down that route. So I think these are characters, but looking up here, there's already a split going on for these sprites, but that may have just been set up before those sprites appear. So let's go and have a quick look at the character set. Yeah, so indeed these are it's a character set that's been drawn to. So this character set will be being updated unless unless every every position that they can be in is already represented on screen. So let's have a look when we start this. Yes, it is. Ah, that's clever. So the character set doesn't update, and that's because the character set contains every single one of these cubes in all the positions it needs to do the rotation. So all it's doing is it's basically switching these over. So every frame, this, this, sprite, this kind of block of characters here gets redrawn somewhere else. Um, and then it's, I'm guessing it's just using standard character scrolling to do the, so we go and have a look at the, the values in, uh, where is it, D, X scroll and Y scroll here. We should be able to see these moving around, which they are doing. So that's how they're, they're being scrolled through the screen. Um, and then sprites are being multiplexed over the top. So actually it's quite a simple effect, um, but it's very effective and very, very striking. And it looks very nice as well. Okay, I'm guessing this is a bitmap. Uh, yeah, multicolor bitmap being drawn with a a moving kind of. Okay, right. So this is the effect I wanted to look at. Um, I'm going to pause it. I want to see what's going on. So as I suspected, they are stretch sprites. So the borders of these are stretch sprites, and what's happening is the color ram is being drawn behind it. So because that's if you look these these borders are about half a character wide. So if the character if the if the color ROM is being changed, you can move this into a location where it will cover the the switch as it moves into a new block. So it's again this is quite a simple effect, but they're having to the scrolling color ram in the shape of characters based on the color that's behind as well so there'll be some kind of calculation or it may be pre-calculated um, to decide what colors are going to be applied in, in here um, and then it's using sprites to hide that kind of transition between each uh, between each block as well but it's a, it's a very impressive again effect I know I say this a lot but I, I am always in awe of these demos um, right, let's slow it down, you'll see what I mean. You see how it's changing the colour behind it. And by using sprites it's a clever way to hide that, uh, that, that colour change as it flicks into the next block. And you'll notice that the, the scroller itself is moving um, it looks like it's moving four pixels at a time anyway, which is why it's moving so fast. Um, so the, the border is always either on the left side or the right side of a, of a character block. Um, so if it's on the left side, if it's on the left side of a character block, that means the right side has got the color applied to it. If it's on the right side, it means the left side doesn't have the color applied to it. Um, so it's it's really simple to just switch it inside, switch it on inside here, and turn it off outside it. Very very simple again effect, but very effective. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't like to attempt it myself. I'm guessing it's not um, not the most uh, simple piece of code to write. But the 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 effects the, the way the effect works is actually quite simple. Okay, so this is this DYCP effect that we're seeing again. Uh, so this is doing uh, full screen. So I think because this is bitmap, I'm assuming this is all sprites, and I'm guessing the height, the fact that it's moving so high means they can multiplex quite easily because there's never going to be more than eight sprites in a row. Um, so let's have a look at that. Yeah, so you can see they're multiplexed all the way up and down. 
and what I think is really clever about this is if you look at the characters, um, it's done row at a time, uh, sorry, column at a time. So every column of pixels is is moved vertically up and down depending on where it is. You get proper curve in the in the um, in the text as it moves, and you'll see it here. Actually, if we just lock this here, you'll see as the characters go. They do bend along with the along the curve. Um, which is, uh, I mean, that's kind of interesting how they've done that because with the DYCP that I've done um, before, and I'm guessing the the kind of standard way to do it is you just take a single character data. So so one row of pixels is one byte. But in order to get this to work, they've had to split that row up into columns and shift them up. So they have to, they can't just take the character directly from memory. There must be some pre-calculation about how that, how that character gets warped as it, as it moves. Um, so I'm guessing in the, in the memory table in here, which is probably what all of this is here. Um, actually, no, this looks like code. This is speed code. Let's jump to that location. Whoops. Uh, what's that? Two four hundred. Two six hundred. Okay. Yeah. So this is where the speed code starts, and it looks like it's reading from values from up here. Also values here as well. And this is what's been written to. So this is probably screen area here. F3B1, yeah, this looks like screen area. So no, it can't be screen area. This is the sprite area, sorry. That we can see actually if we go in here. Bitmap is at C0100 and yeah, sprites are in that area. Okay, cool. I'd like to know how they've done that, um, how they've done that shifting as well. Um, because I have, I seriously have no idea how I would even go about doing that. I'm guessing they've got pre-calculated tables for these, these characters. Um, Let's have a look, see if we can find it as we look through the memory. So let's go up to if anything kind of sticks out in here as this looks like it could be it. And that definitely looks like characters of some kind. And if you look, it kind of fits. There's a definite pattern going on there as well. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight as well. So one of the things you'll see when you look in, in these debuggers is because this, this row is 256 wide, um, it, if you can create a table that's 256 bytes long for your perp, for whatever purpose you need it for, that's going to be the most efficient, especially if you've got lots of tables. So if you need to reference, um, uh, say say you've got 16 tables and you need to pick a number from one of those 16 tables if you have them all 256 bytes long that makes that look up a lot quicker because you only have to change one byte in order to look something up from there so it would be you know a0 0 0 a1 0 0 you only have to change that that first byte in order to uh, to look those up so you'll see this a lot where you'll get a kind of matching patterns going down like this and that's just because these tables are more efficient to look up like that so i just wonder if this is 26 rows long or or just a little bit more um so this starts at a 200 ish uh, and goes up to b c so 10 6, 26 yeah so i think this is the alphabet this is the alphabet represented with eight different um eight different shifts of the letter as well okay and that's how, how they do it yeah that, that's what this is for every letter there's eight different ways it can be it can be warped i think um 
because this would be the letter, a bit of space underneath. It would make sense. It also looks like they're 16 bit bytes high, or, or well, they're definitely more than eight anyway, I think. Actually, no, maybe not on three, four, seven. Oh, maybe it is only seven. Yeah, anyway. So I think that's how that, I think that's how that works. Again, I I think it's yeah. You can see the way it's reading there. So it's reading these blue lines are showing how it's being read at various points, and you can see the lines kind of move up and down as they go along. I think this is sprites. I think it would make sense to be a combination of sprites and, and raster splits. So I think there's some color splits going on here. Uh, then there's some, some sprites. It looks like they're stretched, or some of them are stretched. Like this one looks stretched, that one looks stretched. Um, which you kind of need to do, maybe this one as well. Uh, you kind of need to do that to fill out the whole screen. The high res, so when they're stretched, they don't look as kind of low detail as if they were multicolor. Um, and you could fit, so look, if you stretch one, two, three, four, maybe five sprites, that would be 48 times five, 240. Um, and then three at 24 wide would be 72. That would almost fill the screen. So maybe it's six sprites, that are, uh, six sprites are stretched. Um, FLD and center artist sprite. No, I don't think, because these move independently of each other. Oh, mind you, I guess it could still be FLD, couldn't it? Because they do kind of... Yeah. Do you think the center is the sprite? I think these are the sprites. Let's have a look. Uh, get the right screen. Yeah, th those are the sprites, okay. What kind of move my... Yeah, see, it's... One, two, three, four, five, six of them were stretched, and two of them were, were the same. Um, how do I move my mouse again? How do I get rid of that from blocking? Move, god damn it. There we go. You can see the color splits as it goes down, so it draws one row of sprites in that color, changes the background to match. Then it draws the next row in a different color, changes the background to match. And again, and again, again, and so on. Yeah, it would have. I, I mean, I think it, you're right. It could have worked both ways. There. In fact, if they'd have done it that way, Sakrat, they could have had more detail in, in these as well. Um, they've had to stretch those sprites to get them to fit all the way across. Uh, so you can see there with six, six stretched sprites and two non-stretched, you've got maybe two character blocks wider than the screen. Um, But but again, by using high res sprites, you can see these are high res here. By using high res sprites, it means that the the, the graphics don't look that bad when they're stretched, which is it's nice. Um, oops. oops. So these these effects that I really like, you can see that what what they're doing is they're multiplexing. Actually, they're not multiplexing. There should be more down here, or maybe. Hang on, is this just using? Are they using the FLD trick to make this sprite stretch all the way down? Is that what they're doing here? Good night, Emma. And yeah, see you on see you on Saturday. Um, it's <laughs> gonna be fun. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. At the same time, I'm slightly terrified as well. So, <laughs> um, I've never put myself under that pressure with a Commodore 64 code before. I've, I've done similar things with, with um, other languages, but never Commodore 64. So, there's some kind of effect here, which is stretching this sprite all the way down. I, I have a feeling it's an FLD effect. Um. Well, well, not not an FLD as such, but um, uh, suppressing the bad line so that it will keep on drawing this sprite. Um, 
because if you look as I move down the sprite isn't moving at all yet the border is definitely being being cut off all the way down um, Oh, this is done with sprites. Interesting. Ah, it's done with both. Ah, okay. So this is uh, characters that are actually being, as Sakrag rightly said, these are being um, these are being done um, probably just speed speed code and rolling the the scroll here, which is probably what all this is here. Um, but then they're using sprites to create a nice high res overlay, which is is actually a very nice nice look to it as well. Yeah, it is a very clever overlay. It's, it's nice. It creates a nice effect. I would not have thought that. I would. I honestly thought it was a bitmap. Um, you may know no pixie in twenty four hours, <laughs> and then spent a month to finish it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's cool. I like that. And there's nothing. There's nothing special going on with this scroll. It is. It is literally just scrolling that down using normal scroll techniques. Um, so it's doing a, a color scroll. It's probably only scrolling this area um, rather than rather than scroll the whole screen, which would just be a waste of cycle time. There's probably a clever algorithm which is just scrolling a section, it, it, you know, uh, downwards and across at the same time rather than rather than try and do a diagonal scroll of the whole screen. Oh, I missed that. I wanted to catch that effect as well. Try and catch it at the end of this one. And a clever use of um, sprites as well. Uh, and and this is a this is a kind of a nice easy way to do tight sprites. Um, if you only ever need to do four sprites on one line, then you can get incredibly tight sprites because you can overlap the next line. And it means as soon as you've drawn, and you see there. As soon as you've drawn the first row of sprites, even though the second one is still drawing, you can begin setting up the next row and you get very tight sprite formations like that. Um, you'll see that a lot in um, ender level bosses in games. It's a technique used very, very often in games. Um, very few um, games have big bosses which are use all the sprites on, on a row and just have incredibly tight timings. There are a couple that do it. Um, there's the the um, the big big kind of bat thing that's in creatures too, where you have to kick the bugs. That's that's built up of layered sprites, but that doesn't move around an awful lot. Um, but that is rows of very tightly uh, calculated, um, uh, very tightly packed uh, sprites. And there's also Turrican as well, which uh, particularly Turrican too, which has a lot of uh, big enemies um, that are built of very tightly packed sprites, like the and in Turrican One actually, the big fist in Turrican One is um, is built up of uh, incredibly tightly packed sprites. And what happens is actually, and this is why you'll notice when you get to that boss, the screen stops scrolling around. So what happens is you get to that boss, and all the code that was dealing with uh, scrolling the screen around and the the normal multiplexing gets turned off. And that speed, the, the the rest of time is used to just draw that um, the enemy and all the character sprites um, in as tight a formation as possible. It's a very nice switch between the two two methods. Um, we should do Turrican two actually at some point. There's there's a lot that um, we can learn about uh, game coding from Turrican two. In terms of technical game achievements, it's one of my favourite games, if not my favourite. Okay, so let's have a look. So this is now shrinking a little bit. There we go. So yeah, there seems to be something which is allowing this sprite to draw all the way down the screen. So they're not multiplexing this sprite down the screen. It's just being stretched down the screen. Because it's one color, it is probably a simple case of, of delaying the bad lines here somewhere. So actually, you can see bad lines here. Um, and you'll notice as I move down the screen, there are none. So yeah, they're just delaying the bad line and that's causing the sprite to be um, expanded all the way down the screen, which actually is a, another technique you can use for um, stabilizing rasters as well. 
Um, there are some articles on uh, Codebase 64 that show you how to how to stabilize a raster using um, sprites as well. It's also it's I think it's a trick that they use for um, stabilizing for um, border sprite sprites in the border as well by messing around. They have one kind of blank sprite which they can play around with in the border. Yeah, you can see it starts off at, at a normal height there and then they expand it and I think just by delaying the bad lines while that expand happens it, it just makes it um, draw all the way down the screen it's an effect I'd like to learn a little bit more about I might look into that in a bit more detail and do some experiments with that I'd like to I'd like to make something like this this a nice um, nice effect to have that square moving around it looks looks way more um, Looks like it's doing a lot more than it really is. I need to get another drink. Yeah, that I think there's a I think I've seen something where you can use sprites in the border. Um as a way to stabilize the raster so that you can open the side border um, and by leaving that sprite there and messing around with the vertical um, stuff on it you can um, you can make make it easier to do that I, I, again so it's opening the sideboards is something I've never done um, not not on purpose I mean I've had the side borders open by mistake on the odd line here and there um, when I've been doing stuff, but um, never, never on purpose. I'd like to, I'd like to try that someday. As I say, the more I look at these demos, the more I'd, I'd like to actually try writing a demo. But I don't want to do it as part of a competition or anything. I just want to, I just want to experiment and see what I can do. Okay, so interestingly, I'm not seeing this text here. Um, Trying to work out how that's actually drawn. Because it seems to be there in the sprites. Oh no, it is this. It is that one there. And then there's a colour split. Ah, okay. Uh, okay, right. So it is drawn into sprites and then they're using colour splits to change the colour. And then there's another, how is it drawn in the border though? I'm not seeing it in the border down here. Oh, they're using the same technique. So yeah, Sprite Crunch. Okay, cool. Is that the technical name for that then when they, when they make the Sprite bigger than it should be? Sprite Crunch. Okay, I have heard that term. They expand and contract the height as they go, yeah, which is why it's jittering around like that. Okay. And I guess what that does is it tricks the Vic into redrawing um redrawing pixels. So I guess if I can think how the Vic would work, if you were to if you were to draw a line of pixels in a sprite and then just before the next line uh, the, the data for the next line is fetched, you double the height of it and then shrink it back again. You will actually draw that same line again um, and then when you draw the next line and, and so on, you, so you just keep flicking it around between the two and you can probably double the height of the sprites then I guess. Quadruple the height of the sprites. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's something I'd like to try. It's kind of interesting. Um, there's a background colour split going on here. And this sprite crunch is actually stretching it down into this area here as well. Uh, and it looks like this sprite is being drawn. These sprites are being drawn on the fly. Um, okay, and there's lots and lots of practice doing this over and over again. So this is the same thing, isn't it? This is using the sprite crunch to make things bigger. As for wider, it looks like they actually have to physically make the pixels wider anyway. They can't mess with that. 
So in fact, these have to be double width in order to fill the screen. They don't change, but they do flicker between. Oh, okay. I did wonder how they did this. Right, guys, I'm going to take uh, two minutes because I need to go and have a smoke and I need to grab a fresh drink and go to the toilet and stuff. Um, probably the rest of this, this demo and then I'm going to call it a night because I am quite tired. Um, uh, but I do want to finish looking through this demo. It's kind of cool. All right, so I'll be right back in a minute, guys. Be right back. Right, I'm back again. I got water this time. So let's carry on and have a look what's going on. Lots of sprites to create that. Uh, character, Starfield in the back, I'd imagine. It's in a bitmap, so they're just plotting points on a bitmap. And then some sprites. Quite a simple effect, this one. Thank you for the host, Mr. Cola. Oh, and thank you for the follow. Um, a few people I've missed, actually. Uh, Dr. Robot Vinic and Bud Pico. Thanks for the follow, guys. This is an interesting uh, thing. I really like how, how this sort of thing is done. I had an idea for a game a while ago that involved rotating the screen, and I couldn't think how I could possibly do it. So... Um, I mean, I don't know how much raster time is used for this. I'm imagining quite a lot. Am I tonight? I'm okay, thank you. I'm a bit tired. I've had a I've had a long week. Um, I've been falling asleep really early at night, um, which is probably a good thing. Preparing for this weekend's uh, marathon stream, so probably better I get as much sleep as possible. What have you been doing tonight, Mister Cole? What have you been playing? Let's load the next disc. Oh, and it's reset, hasn't it? Damn it. Oh, no. Each disc is... Oh, no, this is... Oh, interesting. So this is a little kind of bonus, bonus thing here, because we put the disc in from the beginning. It's loaded in a slightly different way. It's all done with sprites. Just working, patching your servers tonight. Ooh. Wow, uh, yeah, this is just lots and lots and lots of um, sprites over a bitmap. So they're using... Oh, let's just pause here and see what's going on. So they're using... Um... Actually, it's interesting because the color splits are... Are doing strange things there's there's lots of color splits going on here um it's using a bitmap to to create the blocks of color and then it's using sprite overlays to add detail in which is i guess how they get it to do these kind of these blocks of color here where you see pink and red in the same same square um, but then with a high res overlay as well so uh, you know a kind of quite simple looking picture but actually there's a lot going on to make that picture happen yeah hidden part cool <clears throat> and then sprites in the border down here as well you can see there how the how the color splits are making the screen look very different And lots of sprites to create this kind of clear effect as it goes down. Again, sprite crunching. I've got to learn how to do that. It's a, it's a really cool effect. So they're just using one row of sprites to do that. And then using crunch, they can spread it over the whole screen. Um... Yep, so Sakrak was right. This is just using um, sprites all the way up the screen. From the bottom all the way up to the top. And they're just 
animating those sprites in and out. In fact, even if there's nothing in the sprites, there, so there's probably some routine which is just doing this sprite animation, and there'll be another routine which is filling the data in. So even if there's nothing in the sprite, it's still being animated. You can see, actually, all the sprites are doing a wobbling from left to right. The actual vertical animation is handled by the sprites moving. And this horizontal animation is a combination of the, the sprite pointers being shifted to move the sprites left and right. So if you imagine 26 characters, it's probably more than that because there's a few dashes and dots in here as well. Um, and you multiply that by, uh, say, if we say 32, a bank has uh, 256 um, sprites in it. You need to remove a couple for the screen as well. So they're using a screen and a char set at 4,000, which means that uh, 4 times 4, so 16 sprites they lose. So they've got 240 sprites to play around with, which means they can have plenty of. Um, there's another challenge shimmer going on there. Yeah, so I want to look at the memory for that. I mean, yeah, here we go. I reckon all this is, yeah, there you go. You can see it here. Um, these are the characters moving left and right. So every character, C, D. This is all this data here. Um, and then so that's all the sprites. This is the screen area, which is blank. <clears throat> because uh, there's nothing actually going on in, in the actual screen RAM itself. Uh, so they just need to keep it clear. Um, and then they can use the rest of the, the bank for, for the sprites. Um, and this looks like, you can see the, the data being read as it shifts through here. This looks like the, the sign table, which is moving these characters, uh, the, the sprites in and out. <clears throat> Double up for upper and lower char and a sprite. Is that what they're doing? Have they got? Oops, wrong, wrong screen. Which one is it? I want this one. Oh yeah, they do. Two, two characters in each one. Ah, and then they change the pointer. Ah, clever. Clever. So, basically, what's happening here? is as we go down you'll see this so this top row has y e c s but as we go to the second half of the sprite the pointer actually it's, it's not changing in time they change the pointer halfway down once once one's drawn they change the pointer to draw the next character underneath which allows them to yeah so that's how they're doing that um the, the tight packing that's a, a clever technique actually Again, the, the beauty of demos is that a lot of times the, the techniques themselves are simple, but it's just having the, having the kind of thought to do them in the first place. Again, some more sprite crunching going on. Nice border sprites. And here's our zoom sprite. So this is again using the sprite crunch thing to is it using a sprite crunch? It doesn't look it should be doing because oh yeah it is there you go you can see so the indicator that we're using sprite crunch is when you scroll over uh, the vertical space in a sprite at some point the sprite will uh, glitch down into uh, normal size and then back up to double size that's an indication that they're doing that Yeah, it's it's. I'm I really like that technique actually. I kind of want to make a vertical scroller now. Now I know that you can do that. I mean, I knew you could do that. I knew you could switch sprite pointers halfway through a sprite. It's kind of frustrating. So with with sprites, um, you can change a sprite pointer halfway through a sprite. You can change a sprite's x position um, halfway through a sprite. What you can't do is change its y position. So once it's in place. It will start drawing in that place. 
So using this sprite crunch, you can change where it ends, um, but it will always start at that position. You can't suddenly start drawing it a bit further down, or you can't you can't move it back ten lines to suddenly end the sprite. Uh, once it's started, that Y position is locked. Um, but sprite pointers you can change, colors you can change, um, Vic banks you can change. If you want to switch between multiple Vic banks and you want more sprites, you can do that. Um, and and yeah, and the uh, the X position you can change. So in um, in Doc Two, my uh, pause effect has that kind of ripple as it goes through the screen, and that's doing two things. It's it's setting the scroll value for those locations to create a kind of a warp in the screen that that slowly moves up like the H band would do. But at the same time, it does um does that it changes the x position of the sprites as well so that the sprites also get the same effect as it goes up this is just a really good example of of speed code being able to draw these sprites very very quickly um i mean i i'd love to know what the code looks like that generates this because um, it's a it's a very very cool effect but i imagine it's just some some clever code so this is what i was saying they're using um let's get it in the middle there we go so they're using a uh, raster background raster color splits background and border actually uh, to change the the border color as it moves over here and then again for the bottom half here as well and they're also using FLD no not FLD sorry if they're using this bright crunch where is that now that because that looks like it's changing in the wrong place Hang on brown red yeah this is just sprite crunching bright crunching speed code and some raster splits but again I wouldn't like to attempt to do this Maybe I need to at some point redo my um, my be right back to to do something like this. I always think the the memory maps are really interesting to look at while these things are going on. You see some really interesting patterns sometimes. <coughs> There, this is going to be straightforward. This is going to be some sprites here, sprite falling down the screen. Uh, the, this is probably all done with characters, I'd imagine. Uh, maybe a sprite for the flashing cursor. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So the text here is a sprite. Um, the flashing cursor is indeed a sprite. This is done with characters. Um, and this is sprites as well. So it looks like. Four sprites for the box. Actually, it's four sprites, but overlaid, um, expanded sprites by the looks of things. No. No, it's just, it's four sprites. You can see up in the top there, it's four sprites and then two for the flaps bit at the back as well. And then four sprites for the guy. He falls four sprites for the, the text here because you've got four sprites going past and you've got four sprites here so you can only have eight on a line nice and simple I think this is the insert the disc isn't it oh yeah I wanted to see how this was actually done so the white background is a sprite this looks like it's all characters or yeah it's just high-res characters but then this what's happening here okay so let's pause there what is going on there what are these sprites you've seen some data there oops pause please pause yeah So sprites down the side for these. It looks like there's two sprites actually for each area. 
or it could be characters as well. I think this, what we're seeing in this this area here, is um, because it's black text and this background is black. We're not actually seeing the text, and this is these grey uh, lines are the kind of anti-aliasing artifacts. But we're only seeing it on one half, which would mean this side is done with characters. So. So there's the full screen. Um, let's bring up the character set. Yeah, so one half is done with characters and the other half is done with, with sprites. Which is not what I would have expected at all. Cool. Shows an animation went on. Let's see. It's food port. Yeah. So it's weird how it's. It is really weird how it's doing one side with um, text, but you can actually you can tell the difference. So on this side there are no anti-aliasing because it's it's black text on a on a grey background, but here where it's black text on a white background, they've used some grey pixels within the sprites to kind of blend it in and make it look less jagged against against the background. Um, and then this is also uh, sprites overlaid on characters to create the nice, nice effect at the side. Um, let's have a look at the character set there as well. Uh, I was on the right screen all along, wasn't I? There we go. Uh, it's kind of hard to see it in here. Uh, well, I am imagining that these are characters in here. I'm pretty sure if I try and draw. Uh, all right, maybe not. Paint blocked. Okay, I can't draw. I still don't know how to use this screen properly. I should try this at some point. Uh, display maybe. All oh, right, you can turn. Oh, what I'm looking at here. No, I thought I could turn the sprites off. Oh, no, that's never bitmap, surely not. I know it is. Ah, okay, so, so this side is a bitmap. This is a bitmap. This is a bitmap with sprites overlaid. And then this is a bitmap as well. Um, with sprites overlaid, probably for the text. Or, or maybe just for the anti-aliasing. It could be that there is no um, black in these sprites. It is just the grey bits. Um, in fact, yes, it is just the grey bits, because if you look, the sprite pixels are square up here. So they're not high res, they're just grey. So this entire thing is a bitmap, and the sprites are used to add the anti-aliasing around these characters. That must have been one hell of a job to, to work that out. Yeah, there you go, you can see. Wow, okay. Always amazes me how they, they the the time and effort they put into these. Okay, let's put the next disc in. Might as well just drop it in and see if there's any bonus bonus piece of code in here. There is indeed. It looks like some kind of hairy ball sack. <laughs> Delightful. Okay, oops. I think this is sprites and it has to be sprites in the border. There's no other way to do this, but let's just confirm that anyway. Oh, interestingly, the whole thing is the whole thing is sprites. So they're just animating it through a load of sprites and then repeating it at the bottom in the other direction. Ah, okay. So. They're using um, the AGSP trick here to move this ball around. Um, so you can see the ball's actually static. So this is a character animation. It's not what I would have expected, actually. I would have expected this to be sprites. Um, so this is uh, a single character animation, and then they're using uh, the AGSP technique to move it around the screen.
Uh, so this is uh, this is just scrolling everything. This is there's no special tricks going on here. This will just be unrolled speed code to to scroll all these characters across and the color RAM related for them. Then there's a multiplexed block of sprites for these columns and oh these are doubled up these sprites that make these cubes are doubled up probably one for the shadow so it's got a high res dithered shadow um, and then an animated cube over the top char mode a bit map it's bitmap actually yeah uh, actually it's char mode at the top Char mode at the bottom, bitmap in the middle. Um, I mean, impressive anyway. I mean, you can't... Scrolling a bitmap like that is not an easy thing to do without speed code. I mean, you wouldn't see that in, in games, really. It is a lot of effort, yeah. That could have been done with, could have been done with chars, but I guess that allowed them to have more detail. So this is a bitmap. Um... It's just been drawn to on the fly. There's no, there's no sprites hiding this at all. You'll notice there's always a one character gap here as well. I'm sure, that's significant for some reason. I can't think of what it might be at the moment. Um, so again, this is just going to be speed code doing this, and then the combination of the two is also going to be speed code. There'll be lots of tables looking up these, these circles, um, and how they overlap. Color ram. Um, yeah, I imagine it is lots of color ram changes. Uh, it has to be right because actually, it's this. This might be being drawn from. Yeah, there we go. I had a funny feeling this was being being copied. So you can actually see these circles in memory here. And what it's doing is it's just grabbing blocks of these and drawing them onto onto there. So those disappeared now. But the, yeah, that was what it was doing basically. Those those circles were already drawn into this block of memory here, and then it was using two moving windows um, uh, to to kind of grab the block of data at that area and copy in. Probably using speed code still to do that, but. Um, See this? Look how how that's working in memory. So cool! It looks cool just looking at the way the memory works. So again, this is probably just a bitmap. So let's have a look. Um, actually, no, it's sprites. Okay. Oh, because that allow them to to wiggle it around a bit more as well, I guess. Um, although that sprite doesn't seem to change as it goes down, which is odd. How are they doing that then? Less to clear too. Yeah, because they can just copy that blocking, can't they? So <clears throat> uh, CSDB ranking. So let's have a look at this. Uh, prior art fossil performers. So it's around. Yeah, okay. Weighted average. Cool. Yeah, these these are the three I always see whenever I see good demos. It's always it's always one of these three that that seems to appear. Yeah, maybe it can. What I find interesting there doesn't seem to be any update to that to that sprite. It's, uh, no, it is updating in here, but it doesn't update as it goes down the screen. There's some kind of crazy pointer thing that they can do. Let's have a look in memory. Um, where was it getting that sprite from? Hang on. It's getting it from 0600. So let's go and have a look at 0600 in memory, which is around about here somewhere. Uh, no, it's here actually. Uh, I'm not seeing anything in this sprite. Why am I not seeing sprite data down the side? I turned it off somehow. I was messing around in one of the screens. I think I might have turned off the. Uh, 
Oh no, see, here's the here's the actual screen. Yeah, I think I've broken something. I need to reset my my settings. I've done something odd to this. I need to know what these these things are doing. Um, I'm not seeing any data down the side here that I would normally see, and I'm not seeing anything in this screen when I move up and down. So I think I've broken something somewhere. Uh, right, so that turns it off. Games. Uh, yeah, I think I've confused the debugger. Um, although, where was, where was that screen? There was it? Yeah. So this is okay. So it is actually. Well, now look, there's there's bits outside the sprites. I'm not, I'm really not hundred percent sure how they're doing this. So what are these bits? How are these bits drawn? Changing sprite X. Yeah, I guess actually. Yes, that would make sense, wouldn't it? So you have a sprite. Yes, yeah, you're right. That's what it's doing. That's why we're seeing this bend here as it comes out. In a bend this way as it comes out here. Uh, I guess that still fits. If you imagine these sprites shifted into these, each line shifted into the box. Hi, bag of potatoes. I think it's as Sacrack says. I think, um, I'm, unfortunately, I think I've broken the, the debugger. In fact, I'm going to relaunch it because I, I need to make sure I haven't completely broken it. Uh, we can jump straight to disk three, so that's, that's good. Uh, stick disk three in. I think it is just shifting the X sprite. So as, if we look at this um, in the right view, uh, which is this one. Yeah, see, it seems to be working now. I think what we'll see is that the sprites, um, as Sakrak said, they, they're shifting the X position as, as it goes down the sprite. So it's creating a kind of warp within the sprite. Yeah, moving the sprite between scan lines, exactly. we get to that section <laughs> I'm, I am amazed at how much effort it must have been to move that bitmap across the screen like that like how much cycle time must that be using to shift an entire bitmap even with unrolled code that's going to be a lot So let's give this, uh, oh, we've got this one again. So I'm going to look at this from here. So you'll see, see, there's the circles. But this is one circle, and it looks like it's buffering between a few of them. It's using four buffers to do, for, to do this. I imagine that there will be, uh, if I can get there in time. Actually, no, the buffer isn't changing. The bitmap screen, screen and chart set. Hang on, bitmap. Yeah, bitmap stays in the same place. Okay. Okay, this looks more. Yeah, you can see as I move up and down, the sprite moves left and right. Yeah, Sackcrack was right. It's it's shifting the sprite left and right as we move up and down, which creates this. Um, oh my god really got to learn these shortcuts a bit better than I already do which creates this kind of effect of it bending more than it actually is so if we look at the sprites in the actual um, in here so you don't see the sprite point is changing as you go down I have done something I don't know what I've done but um, you can see a moving left and right which is good Cool. Um, I think that's about it for this demo. I'm just going to let it play through to the next section, um, and then I think I'm going to call it a night on that and get some sleep in, um, ready for Saturday. As you can see, I mean, we've only touched on two demos tonight, but um, and Sackrack will back me up on this. The the key to kind of doing these demos is learning 
uh, speed code. A lot of it is about finding ways to um, to do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do, uh, in, for instance, in a game. And and the trick to that is is not doing loops in the normal way by unrolling everything you can. Um, using the space that you've got available to to unroll that code and yeah and using victrix to to do certain things um and every, every time we do this we we talk about there's, there's a couple of tricks that are always being done um you know opening the borders is probably the most common one and it's, a, it's something we use in the games as well um and then there's other tricks like um, multiplexing you know re reusing sprites that's something you'll use in games all the time and it's using almost everything in a demo uh, uses it in some shape or form um tricks like um delaying bad lines uh, can give you effects like fld um which we use in in games now and again i think there are other games that use it i'm pretty sure um, um but it's it's used for a lot of things as well um sprite crunch seems to be one of the things that um, I need to learn, so I'm going to learn about that. Um, so that uh, sprite crunch looks kind of similar to the way the borders open, that you're tricking the Vic into thinking it's in one state when it's not. Um, and yeah, and stable rasters as well. So all those nice raster effects with the screen kind of bouncing around and changing shapes and stuff, that's, it, that needs kind of nice, good stable rasters so that you don't get these flickery effects at the side. Um, stable rasters get a little bit harder to do in games because you tend to have sprites moving around all over the place. Uh, you can deal with them, um, but a lot of the time you can just hide it. So, like in the in the game we use at the weekend, we've got a split at the bottom of the screen. Um, rather than kind of work out the exact timing to make it perfectly stable, um, it was easier just to knock out the, the 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 flicker because we knew it was always happening around this area of the screen. So we just use some NOP operations to just move the code so it happened in the border. Because if you if you don't have the side borders open and you don't care about changing the border colour, then if you just want to avoid flickers in your main screen, you've got quite a lot of border space to do things in. So you can do a lot of the stuff in here and avoid the flicker. I prefer to work on algorithms rather than Vitrix. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think I like the, the algorithms as well. But I do like... I like the inventiveness of the Vitrix. I like the fact that people go and they look at how the Vic works and they think, well, if it works like this and I, I do this at the, just the right time, I can trick the Vic into doing so-and-so. And most of the tricks we see in demos now are things that would have been un, unthought of and just not thought impossible in you know, when the Commodore first came out. Um, but it's through the kind of perseverance and the desire to make these uh these these kind of effects um when the commodore really shouldn't be able to do them that's that's give us uh the demo scene as it is today and and, and for me it's what makes the commodore such a special machine because we we keep trying to do more and more things um it's very cool i like it anyway on that note i'm gonna call it a night guys because i do need to get some sleep um let's go and raid hitch i've never raided hitch i don't think or i haven't done it recently anyway so let's give him a let's drop in on him so hitch for those who don't know uh streams a lot of uh retro computer games um he does a, he does commodore stuff as well he's currently playing doom 64 at the moment interesting um you think hitch is done ah okay he's still on i'm gonna i'm gonna raid him anyway i'm gonna give him give him all the all the viewers for a little bit force him to stay awake a bit longer <laughs> um yeah cool so i'll see you guys on saturday it'll be a bit earlier than usual we'll be starting at 5 p.m uh, and we'll go right through to 5 a.m um which will be a 13 hour stream because the clocks go backwards that night as well so um looking forward to that hopefully we'll do an entire game in one night which is going to be a bit of a challenge but i'm i'm confident we can do it we've got um we've got the assets up front so um yeah cool i will see you guys on saturday take care guys oh actually it helps if i actually click the raid you got me for another seven seconds before we raid <laughs> all right 
I'll see you Saturday, guys. Take care. Bye. Oh, he's... Glad you had some great pickups from PRG. Uh, Similarian Hitch, thank you for the host. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of people that are hosting me already. Damn it. Uh, never shuts up. Thank you for the 13 months. Got your Mr. Bones in the perfect month.